traffic. Six o'clock. High. Less than one mile. Level. Hi everyone, it's Martin Pauly. I'm flying my Bonanza from my home base in Cedar Rapids, Iowa to Aurora, Illinois for the uh, ADSB installation. Aurora has a shop, uh, JA Air, that uh, is going to install the uh, L3 links instead of my uh, Garmin mode C transponder that I have today. Um, that's in preparation for the mandate. Uh, as you probably know by 2020, everyone uh, flying in most of the US airspace needs to be equipped with ADSB out. I'm going one step further. Uh, installing ADSB in in addition to the out and then an additional step I'm also getting active traffic which means that I'll have uh, direct visibility to uh, airplanes that are only equipped with the uh, mode C or even a mode A transponder uh, that don't have the ADSB out or that uh, are not relayed to me by a ground station. What does all this mean? ADSB out is a central piece of the next generation air traffic control system with an enhanced transponder that broadcasts, that's the B in ADSB, the GPS position in a digital format. This digital position report is sent about twice a second and received by ADSB ground stations that feed the position data into their overall traffic picture for air traffic control, with much higher accuracy than traditional secondary surveillance radar. But the same digital position report can also be received by other aircraft with ADSB in equipment and provide cockpit display of traffic information for better awareness of other nearby traffic. That's what ADSB in provides. It shows pilots the position of other aircraft either based on the ADSB out messages directly received from those other aircraft or based on information the ADSB ground stations send out in order to provide a more complete traffic picture. But there are some other situations that require even more help. For example, in a traffic pattern below radar coverage, if there is other traffic in the pattern without ADSB out and only with a traditional transponder, I cannot see that traffic even if I have ADSB in. That's where active traffic helps. It sends out interrogations to the traditional transponders of nearby aircraft and determines, through the distance and relative bearing, the position of those other aircraft, so that they too can be displayed in the cockpit. With these three components, ADSB out, ADSB in, and active traffic, I can see almost all aircraft around me. I say almost because there is still aircraft without transponders flying, like gliders or older airplanes that don't have an electrical system. So I still need to keep my eyes open. Because I wanted active traffic to be integrated with my ADSB solution, there were not many options to choose from. Garmin has products that can be combined to do all this and they would work very well with my 530 and 430 navigators. But I selected the L3 Lynx, which integrates ADSB in and out as well as active traffic all in one box and also has a built-in GPS receiver and a nice touchscreen display to operate the unit and show traffic and weather information. The avionics shop that did the installation is JA Air in Aurora, Illinois, a Chicago suburb. JA Air is an FBO and a shop that has a very good reputation for avionics work. I have been here a few times for smaller items, and this ADSB installation is going to be the largest upgrade since I got the Bonanza five years ago. My friend Rob, you may remember him from my Chicago and Minneapolis videos, was kind enough to pick me up from Aurora. We flew the short distance over to Schaumburg to have lunch before heading back to Cedar Rapids. Here we are crossing over DuPage and then we join the downwind to runway 11 in Schaumburg. Pilot Pete's is the name of the restaurant on the second floor of the FBO building and their world famous pot roast is to die for. Since I was only a passenger on the way home, I could even enjoy a beer with lunch. Fast forward five weeks. My airplane is ready to pick up. It's a weekday and I cannot find another pilot with spare time to give me a ride to Aurora, so I'm renting a car one way and drive it over Interstates 80 and 88 to Aurora. To call the drive scenic would be an overstatement, but the excitement to be reunited with my Bonanza after weeks apart makes it all worthwhile. JA Air did a fine job with the installation of the Lynx transponder, 
and they made a few other improvements while the plane was there. On the outside, the most noticeable change is the large directional antenna on the top. This is the active traffic antenna, which can interrogate nearby transponders and also determine the direction from which their response is coming. The VHF antenna for my number one comm radio that used to be here is gone. It was replaced with an antenna of different style which is now mounted on the bottom. Also on the bottom, the old L-band antenna from my old transponder didn't meet the specs for the links, so it had to be replaced with this new one. And back to the top, you can see here the third GPS antenna next to the two Garmin GPS antennas, which feeds into the GPS receiver inside the links. Inside the cockpit, there have been a few changes too. First of all, the links itself. Unlike the old mode C transponder, which was removed from the panel, the Lynx has a display with a lot of valuable information. So instead of leaving the transponder at the bottom of the stack, the GPS's were moved down to make room for the links between my audio panel and the Garmin 530. But there were more changes on the panel. My old altimeter was on its last leg. It was replaced with a new pointer altimeter. Since the old one was an encoding altimeter, I also added a blind encoder to the setup. The three lights above the attitude indicator that were supposed to repeat the landing gear indicators never really worked since I owned the plane, so they were removed. The GPS annunciator panel, which had been off to the side, now moved over here, making it much easier to see. In the process of cleaning up the overall electrical system, a bunch of circuit breakers were replaced. And finally, I now have a glove box in my panel, something a previous owner of my Bonanza had taken out at some point. Overall, my panel is still pretty old school. The traditional mechanical six-pack and the capable but by now fairly old Garmin Navcoms don't look as fancy as the newer glass panels, but they let me fly to all the same places regardless. And the many improvements that JA Air did while I was in there add up to a nicer, cleaner cockpit. But enough hangar talk, let's go flying and see how the Lynx holds up in the air. On this first flight after returning from the shop, I'm going to try to pass the operational test for the FAA's ADS-B rebate program. This requires a flight in ADS-B airspace for at least 30 minutes and a variety of maneuvers described in AC-20-165B, climbs, descents and turns at various altitudes. If you're in search of a good example of confusing government publications, Look no further than the description of the flight test requirements in AC-20-165B. Probably written by engineers rather than pilots, they didn't give me confidence that I really understood what profile I'd have to fly to pass the test. And passing is required to get the $500 rebate that the FAA offers for a limited time for owners of certain aircraft, like my Bonanza. So with my friend Clint, I took off from Cedar Rapids and spent a half hour inside the Class Charlie airspace around my home base climbing, descending, turning, all the while hoping that we would meet the expectations of the FAA. After the flight, you can request a report from the FAA website and see how you did. In my case, I passed the operational test and received a code with which I could request my $500 rebate. All that happens online and the FAA mails a check to the aircraft owner when everything is complete. Uh, cloud traffic, but it says Zero Tango Bravo is now at 2000, will cross the uh, departure end of the runway west to the east, leaving the area to the east, Cloud. Are we on YouTube today? We are. For the next flight, I was looking for busier airspace to see how the traffic display works and to get an understanding of when and how traffic alerts are issued by the links. To do that, I left Bolingbroke Clow one morning after meeting friends there for breakfast and headed to the shore of Lake Michigan in Chicago. Surely that would give any traffic system a good workout.
Southwest 230, left turn 220, and contact Chicago departure. Have a good day. Good day, Southwest 230. Some traffic here along the lake shore, including one here. This says he is uh, 2200, so he should be a little higher. He should be coming up ahead. Do you see him? No. I see him now. I oh, am. Yeah. Okay. There he is. So now it changes color because it's uh, recognized as a potential threat. There he is. Traffic, 10 o'clock, same altitude, less than one mile, level. That's good to have that voice. And the Garmin thought we needed help too. Very good. And we got another one in front of us that we're following. He's 300 feet lower. It's now been a couple of months since my ADS-B installation, and on many flights since then I've become familiar with the links and used to it. The traffic information, especially with the addition of active traffic, gives me peace of mind. And like many other pilots before me, it has been amazing to see firsthand how many airplanes are flying in the sky around me that I would have never seen without this kind of electronic help. The only issue I've experienced so far is that on a couple of occasions the touchscreen didn't work properly, making it impossible to set the squawk code. Both times the fault cleared itself after a few minutes and the manufacturer tells me there's a software update available for the unit that will prevent the issue from happening. If I had to do it over, would I do anything different? I don't think so. Overall, I'm very happy with the links and the installation that JAA Air has done on my airplane, and with the decision to spend the extra money on active traffic. It wasn't cheap, but I'm sure that in the future, without active traffic, I would look back at this installation as a missed opportunity to get the most value out of my installation. Now there's just one more thing to do, and that is to wait for my rebate check. Rebates are still available at the time I'm making this video, but you have to hurry. September 18th of 2017 is currently advertised as the last day you can reserve your rebate. After the reservation, you have 60 days to install the equipment and pass the operational flight test to get your rebate. The website said it would be mailed to me in a short while, whatever that means in government terms.